Hello, it's Alistair Creelman and uh, a quick introduction to Twitter for those of you who have never used it before. A little, in a little introduction, a little bit of explanation and some tips on how to get started. On the ONL course, Open Network Learning, we'll be using Twitter quite a lot, especially for so-called tweet chats. And there's another video that will explain that. But let's get down to Twitter. <clears throat> what is it? Basically, it's short messages that you send over your mobile or your um, or whatever device you have, and you've got a maximum of 280 characters. What you can do with those 280 characters is up to you. You can send information, opinions, links, discussions. Uh, you can uh, you can even enclose a link to a video or an image. There are many things you can do with it. Of course, we associate Twitter today with uh, rather on uh, the darker side of the net with an awful lot of um, trolls and uh, hate and uh, controversy and so on. But I assure you that if you choose your if you choose wisely who you follow and develop a following within your academic field, then you will not be troubled by the uh, the trolls of the world. I certainly haven't been so far. Everything you send on Twitter, a message on Twitter is called a tweet, by the way. So every tweet that you send goes out to those people who follow you. So this means that if you have two followers, they are the only people who are ever going to see what you send on Twitter. If you have no followers, there's no point in sending a message because nobody's going to receive it. It'll never be seen. If you have a thousand followers or several thousand followers, then it will be seen by many people. So we need to be always aware of what audience we have. However, the trick with Twitter is that whatever you send can then be forwarded by the people who receive it. And that's called retweeting. So if I write something and send it out on Twitter and I have, say, 10 followers, one of my 10 followers thinks that was a very good message. I like that. I want to spread that message further. So that person will retweet my message to his or her followers. That person may have thousands of followers. So suddenly my little comment, which went out to 10 for people, is now retweeted to thousands. And they can then retweet it to thousands more. And before you know what's happened, it's everywhere. So always be aware also that things can be retweeted. And once you send something out on Twitter, you can't pull it back. It's uh, or you can't really pull it back. Once it's out there, it's out there. So think before you tweet. And the basic rule is don't tweet controversial things. Keep it safe. Keep it sensible. Keep it respectful. So why should you bother with Twitter, especially in an academic setting or in education? What's the point? Well, it all depends on who you follow. It's about keeping up to date with what's going on. Make sure you, you follow the right people, people who are actually tweeting things that are of interest to you. You can use it for networking. You can, call, you can, ha you can follow people who you respect, who are active in your field and who provide you with good information. And you can actually get to know people through Twitter. It's about getting information, having an information flow. Don't worry about all the stuff that comes. I mean, make, try to follow quite a few people and organizations at first. Um, Every time you go into Twitter, you'll, you'll see a flow of tweets like you see on the right here. And that just goes on and on forever. Uh, all day long, there are new things. If you follow maybe a if you follow maybe 100 or 200 different sources, they're going to be tweeting information all the time. It's not like email where you have to read everything or you feel you have to read everything. Just let it flow. Go in now and again, scroll around. If you see something interesting, click on a link, find out what it is, retweet it. But just go in and take what you find. You don't need to look at what's been going on for the last uh, day since you logged in previous time. Forget about it. Just see what's happening now and see what you can find. It's a good way for having discussions with colleagues as well. 
and for getting help and support. I have had quite a lot of support from my Twitter network because I've maybe been looking for an article about a certain topic. So I'll write a question on Twitter. Does anyone know whether there's a good article about this? And sometimes within an hour, I've had two or three really useful links that have been sent by people I follow or who follow me. And uh, that way I, I get you get you get quite a lot of help and support. Now, you could use, of course, the Twitter interface at twitter.com, but I can recommend you using TweetDeck. And TweetDeck is a tool that has been developed by Twitter, and there you see the web address. Uh, and TweetDeck is just a great way to organize all the tweets, and I'll show you how. Here's a picture of uh, a bit of my TweetDeck, and <clears throat> it's arranged in columns and buttons, a, menu, a button menu on the left. If I want to write a new tweet, I just press that button and start writing, and then I send it. <clears throat> I can create columns, and the most obvious column to have is one called Home, and this is basically everything that the, the people that I, the people and organizations that I follow, everything they tweet comes into this flow. So this is my, my, my home feed. And this just, it can be, it can actually, you can actually see it growing as you sit and watch it. New tweets come in almost every few seconds, depending on how many people you follow. You can follow people, you can follow newspapers, you can follow news agencies, you can follow journals, you can follow blogs, you can follow lots and lots of sources. Anyone who mentions my name on Twitter, I'm interested in seeing what it is. Sometimes it's answering something that I've asked. So I want to be able to see that without going in and scrolling all the way down in the first column. So I create a column called mentions. And this way I can quickly see people who are answering me directly. Then there are hashtags that I follow. A hashtag is a sort of a sort of cross, the, the, the hashtag, a double cross. And then there are many, many things. You can have hashtag, here you can see hashtag ONL191 for the course from the, the, er, the early part of 2019. Uh, beside it, you can see hashtag ONL192, which is the course in the latter part of 2019. And here I can follow everything that has that hashtag. There's more about that in the video that I've done about taking part in a tweet chat. I can search for hashtags by using the search button and I can then create a new column. I can search for a hashtag and then make it into a new column or I can look for people. And if I want a new column directly, then I press that plus button and then decide what the new column is going to be about. So on TweetDeck, you can have several columns so you can follow your main news feed, all the people who mention you, any hashtags. There are also columns for direct messages and direct messages are between you and one other person and no one else on earth can see them. These are private messages and you can follow that also by creating a, uh, a column. The most important thing is get started, create a profile. So quick advice, create an account, make a profile. Since you're going to be using this for academic purposes, it can be quite a good idea to create a proper profile with a photo or a reasonable photograph of something like something like yourself uh, and some information about why you're on Twitter. Who are you? What do you do? If you have a completely anonymous profile, then people will not follow you because uh, they have no idea whether you're a robot or a spammer or whatever. And I tend not to follow people whose identities are completely hidden. Follow a few people you know that you know are active on Twitter. Uh, follow some colleagues, follow me if you want, even for a little while. But that's a good way of seeing how it works. Some of those people might follow you back. So if you follow them, they might follow you. See who they follow. 
if you click on me you can have a you can get a list of the people that I follow and you can go through that list and say oh that person looks interesting I'll follow them as well so that you are following the people that I trust and if you trust me then you'll trust the people that I trust so it, it's like building up a network that way follow some sources in your field some publications news services that's a good way to start as well they are not going to follow you I promise you but uh, you'll get some information that way Tell people about your Twitter address because otherwise people will never follow you and start using it. Start tweeting or retweeting and use a hashtag if you want to reach more people. So if you write something about education technology, uh, you could put the hashtag edtech at the end of your tweet. That way, everyone who follows the EdTech hashtag, and that's thousands and thousands of people around the world, they'll also see your tweet and they might follow you or they might retweet you. So that's a way of reaching a bigger audience, even if you have a very small number of followers. So these are some hashtags you can follow. The main thing is get started, see how it goes, take one small step at a time and see you on Twitter.